And we all had to check our, you know, we all thought we were big time. We all came, you know, from different high schools. But we had to check the, our egos, our ambitions, everything that we wanted to accomplish those goals. And we had specific goals. We wanted to win the conference championship, want to play in the NCAA tournament, and we wanted to beat a rival Utah at Utah on their home floor. And that was the goal for four years that I was there. My sophomore year, we were 9-21. It was not good. We had a bad, bad year. We did a little better with the NIT my junior year. Uh, but my senior year, you know, I'll never forget the bus ride after we beat Utah at Utah. I'll never forget the party in the locker room after we clinched the conference title. It's not, a not about the recognition or the award, you know, for winning the conference, we got this big ring that's almost unwearable, that I don't even know where it is right now, I can saw with my two-year-old in a jewelry box, but, <laughs> it, you know, it's not, it wasn't about that, it was about the opportunity to battle with my team. I had the opportunity to, uh, you, know, you know, we laughed together, we battled together, we cried together at times, you know, it was, we went through a lot of stuff, but, what I remember most of those relationships that I made with my team. You know, a few years after I graduated, my coach, uh, Dave Rose, and, you know, Dave Rose, this is the guy that, after we won my junior year, we won our second game of the year against Washington State on the road. We didn't think, you know, we were coming off a 9-21 season. We didn't know if we were any good. We won this big game on the road. We come into the locker room, and we're happy and everything, but coach walks in, we kind of stand to attention, like, you know, we're always on edge. Um, he comes in, he throws his papers in the air, and we have this quasi mosh pit in the, the locker room. And we, that became a tradition every, every, after every win. You know, those are the memories that I have. But my coach, Dave Rose, a couple of years after I graduated, uh, he was diagnosed with cancer and almost died. After that, I shot him a quick note just to let him know how much I appreciated him, how much I learned from him. He really pushed me. I was his, you know, the Canadian pansy that really pushed me hard to be better, work harder. And he shot me a note back. I'll read you what he said to me. He said, Jimmy, thanks for your kind words and well wishes. You were a great competitor and one of the best teammates I've ever been around. Thanks for your dedication and hard work. See you soon, coach. Being acknowledged by my coach as a good teammate meant more to me than any other, you know, awards or recognition that I had received. You know, the reason why it meant a lot to me was I wasn't always the best teammate. You know, fortunately I had good coaches, good mentors, good teachers, especially at grad high school. But, you know, one of my good role models was my dad. He always taught me he wanted me to do well individually, but he taught me to not stand out from the team or do anything that would detract from the team that I was on. My high school coach, many of you may know Phil Tallstrip. He's a Canadian basketball legend. My grade 12 year, we were playing pretty good. We won a couple tournaments. We were feeling good about ourselves. I think we won the Luther tournament. Um, I'd been the MVP in a couple of those tournaments. And we were going to the third tournament, and that was at, I think, St. Winston Churchill in Calgary. We started the first game, supposed to be a cupcake game, supposed to beat them pretty good, and we were struggling. I was struggling, the team was struggling, and I was really letting my teammates have it. I was, you know, getting my rebounds, go do you know, all, all the stuff that I was getting on them. And at halftime, we went in, Phil gave us the typical, usual pep talk. Dismissed the team out, but he said, hey, Jimmy, stay here. So I sat down, he put his big size 17, I think it's bigger every year, I think it's you know, 15. <laughs> size 17 up on the chair and just looked at me and he started with, Jimmy, you think you're so dang good. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. The rest was a blur. He, he gave me about a lashing for the next, it felt like an hour, but. He wanted, it's not that he was mad that I was playing that. He, he didn't care less about it. I, I just found it up worse than that in another game. What he was mad about was I was not being a good teammate. I was not being a good leader. I was not doing what needed to be done to, you know, uh, lead our team to where we needed to go. 
you know, after that, went back out. I think some uh, man juice would form from the corner of my eyes, but I don't think anything came out. Um, but I learned the lesson. I played. We played better in the second half. We won the tournament. We accomplished, you know, the goals that we wanted to accomplish. Um, and, and it made me a better person, a better teammate. So I've asked you, are you a good teammate? What is it? What does it mean to be a good teammate? You know, I believe a good teammate cheers for their backup when they get in and make a few shots, knowing that it's probably going to cut into your playing time. That's hard to do. A good teammate is always encouraging and motivating your other teammates when they're having a bad, bad game or in a slump. You know, keep shooting, keep working hard, keep fighting, giving them encouragement. That's what a good teammate, a good leader does on their team. A good teammate celebrates a win even if they didn't play well themselves. I played on teams where, you know, we won a big game, but one of the players is pouting because they only got two points here, something like that. You know, a good teammate plays with the team. And if you play long enough, you'll find that you, you'll play in every role possible on, on a team. I've been the star player on some teams. I've also been the 13th man on some teams. You know when you're the 13th man and you can't get playing time in practice. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> you know, I've been there. I've been in every situation possible. I've been the sixth man. I've done a lot of different roles on the team. But, you know, whatever it is, I know what you're going through. I know, you know, you can't always control the role that you play on your team. But you can always make the decision to be a good teammate. You know, I had the opportunity to do some missionary work uh, in between my freshman and sophomore year in the Marshall Islands, which is by Tonga and Samoa in the South Pacific. And you know, those kids like basketball. I don't know how they really heard about it because it was remote islands, how their facilities that they had for basketball, they had some rebar that's used for construction, they bent it into a circle and stuck it into a coconut tree. Now that's the opportunity that those kids have. I believe that if you're pouting about playing time or you're jealous of another team's successes, you're wasting one of the best times of your life. You're wasting the opportunity to battle with your team, to really be a part of something special. And I know that a lot of you have worked hard to be here. you worked hard to be successful. And whether you get one minute this weekend or 40 minutes, be grateful for the opportunity that you have. You know, it won't last forever, trust me. I'm talking to you about the things that I miss about playing, and those things are, I'm missing my team. I'm missing hanging out with my best friends every day. <laughs> I just want to say, remember your teammates, you will remember them, you know, I can't remember a lot of the stats or figures and, you know, wins and losses, but I can tell you each one of my teammates, where, they're, where they are, you know, how they're doing in their families, their accomplishments, their struggles, you know, I had some great opportunities to play with the national team, I played two years with the Alberta team, some of those guys in the Alberta team, some of those the Ross Shep guys will know Jermaine Buckner, you know, made some best friends, some of those guys, you know, Blaine LeBron. The, the trips that we did, the fun that we had, I'll never, never forget it. I just want to finish with the quote from Michael Jordan. Uh, I know you've all heard, talent wins games, teamwork wins championships. Thank you.